Good evening, and thank you for joining us online here at House of Power Outreach. I'm Pastor Tori, Pastor Reed and I are senior pastors here. Just so thankful and grateful to have you join us. Uh, I want to tell, talk to you about continuing in prayer over you know, I mean, uh, church family members and just loved ones in general that are just needing uh, uh, your continued faith and your continued uh, prayer and watching over them uh, faithfully, just speaking unto God. And, and we're in agreement. We're believing for good reports. We're just thanking God uh, in advance, as, as well as we thank you for standing together with us over uh, the, the, the folks who are in need. And so I'm going to pray, and then we're just going to jump into the word tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, I just praise you and I thank you. And as, as the families, the Solises and, and the family carry and, and, and the family members that we're lifting up, Joe and Melanie and, and Johnny and Jessica. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, that, that you were just ministering life to them and all the people we're lifting up, Nancy, and, and just praying healing over their bodies, Father, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. We just thank you for the good report. We, we stay in a rejoicing mode uh, that our God is able. And Father, we just thank you for tonight's message. We thank you, Lord God, that you have your way, that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, tonight you're talking about voice and violence and have ears to hear and a response to prove it. And so when we hear something and know something, we can do something. Right? You know, once there's someone say, you can't do better till you know better. But once you know better, you're obligated to do better. And, and God has called us to do that. And when I say pray, 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 this voice and violence, be violent about prayer. Jesus said, by stripes, we're healed. Pray. Pray as if you were sick. Pray as if it was someone close to you. Pray like that. That's, that's what I believe when the Bible said for us to come together. And, and when it says our father, it, it's a group thing. It's a gathering. It's a gathering. This is this. Yeah, this is why I don't believe in the whole isolate yourself away from the church and you're saying you're, you're spiritual with God. No, we need one another. We need to pray for each other. We need to lift each other up. And in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12, a very famous uh, verse, it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Well, well there's a battle going on. We we know that, right? Church people being called every phobia, phobic, and whatever they can be called. But they hear the voice, and here's the voice of God and that the kingdom of God suffered by. You're going to be attacked. Jesus said, they hate you because they first hated me. And so, again, whether someone likes you or not, that's not part of the equation because you know your response is to God, not man. And so there is a level of violence that you have to take up and not physically fighting people. But remember, because we don't wrestle against fresh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, wickedness, and rulers. So rulers of this dark place. So our, our battle is to, to strongly declare, I'm serving God. I'm walking with Christ. Regardless of what anything else happened, I'm going to gather with God and I'm going to believe God. And it's taken all of the violence of spiritual violence that you have to hang on to that. Speak that over your children. Speak that over your life. Speak that over your job. Speak the favor in your life through all that we're doing because of where we are. Hearing from God empowers the hearer. And where there is confidence, boldness becomes a way of life. Now, like hearing, hearing from God in, in, empowers those who hear it and willing to hear it, right? And just like a lie empowers a liar. When, when we carry on a lie, it empowers the person who told the lie. It makes their voice stronger because the lie is being carried around by others. Now, listen, if a liar can become stronger, how much more can the body of Christ and the, and the, and the word of God get stronger when believers carry it? with their whole heart. Here's the ministry of God. So we are in un unsure. If, if we are unsure, it would be hard to hear what our beliefs be, be, what beliefs are because it is drowned by insecurity. So hear the word of God. That's why the Bible talks about uh, putting the word in us on a daily basis, right? And, and, and become uh, sure about what you've heard. I can't be violent about what I'm unsure about if I, if I can't use the weapons that I have if I'm not sure about them, if I'm not uh, holding them up regards with the fact that I've heard them. Now, when I hear it and I know it, I can live it. I can I can believe it. I can walk in it and walk with a, with a sense of boldness, with a sense of character. Uh, and, and so begin to build that up. And and, and like Peter prayed to God, God grant unto us boldness. They were being under attack on a regular basis. Again, 
This is not to physically fight anyone. This is to spiritually stay in fight. And this is to spiritually stay upright and spiritually overcome anxiety, spiritually overcome feeling defeated and feeling let down, being able to just stand up and say, I know who God is. I know what God has done. That's who I'm trusting. That's who I'm going with. That takes a lot because again, under the scrutiny, we're going to have to understand, we're going to have to fight back the deceptions over our kids and over ourselves and say, no, I'm violently taking my kids to church, violently going through what I got to go through to get them before God. I'm violently setting down evil imaginations, everything. I try to exalt it itself against the knowledge of Christ in my life. So I'm not going to just put up with it, but, but I got to fight my way through spiritually. In Matthew 4, verse 1 through 4, Jesus did it beautifully when he told Satan's come in there to tempt him. We could say that was one of the greatest temptations of all that came upon when Jesus had been fasting 40 days, 40 nights. He's led into the wilderness by the Spirit. And, and again, for a season, he wasn't led out there for the rest of his life. It was for a season, the enemy came in and with the attacks and, and Jesus' response for him was to him was, was to, under the great attacks. He said he knew the word and ended the attack with man shall not live by, word, by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now listen, if we don't know the word that comes out of God's mouth, we're not going to be able to fend off the evil attacks. The evil attacks that are that are coming against our lives. Now, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He was Satan was trying to get Jesus to cook for himself. No, God has already provided my meal. I don't need I don't need to cook for me. God has already provided. I don't need to justify who I am. God is defending me. I don't need to defend myself. God is defending me. I don't need to lift myself up. The Holy Spirit is lifting me up. I'm stirred up by the Spirit of God. You ain't got to lift me up. I ain't got to cook for me. Quit trying to make me do this on my own. I ended that when I gave my life over to Christ. I'm carried by the will of God. I'm carried by the Spirit of God. I ain't got to pick me up. God got me. And so you have to get violent with that because he'll try to get you to do it on your own thinking you can do it in your own strength. All before you know it, you'll be your own God. It'll be your own idolatry. And this is where we have to step out. Yes, there's a responsibility to respond to what God has given you. But the responsibility to respond to what God has given you is know that God is the one that gave it to you. So you celebrate the gift giver, not the gift. And so we begin to pull that and Jesus began to say that. Now with, with that, we can conclude that every attack is empowered by the word we don't know, or the attack is destroyed by the amount of word we do know. When you go wordless, the enemy has a free shot at you all day long. When you go filled with the word, the enemy is limited in his power and, and soon destroyed. Listen, Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. And again, we got to understand the word of God is the Bible. It is the scriptures. And people can say, well, it's been through these many translations. Listen, God is God. He can protect his word. He built this whole, he put this whole thing together. He has the whole world in his hand. He can protect his word. Quit trying to let someone tell you that man is strong enough to change what God has written. It, it can't be done. If it can be done, we're wasting our time. It can't be done. So again, we, we put ourselves in the position of how wh how am I feeling defeated? Am I wordless? Where am I wordless at? So I can go ahead and fill that void with the word. The kingdom of the kingdom will never be received passively. We it never. The kingdom is received with authority. And listen, love is not passive. Love is, is violent, right? You love somebody. It's violent. There's, there's something that comes over us when we, we got married. There's a love in there. We have our children. There's a, there's a violence about our love. There's a commitment. There's a strong, there's an integrity when you're fighting through with someone. When we got some of our families that are fighting through and believe in God with a loved one, there's a, there's a violence that is turning the corner in their lives that I am not going to just let this go. I'm not going to let this have my loved one. I'm going to stand in agreement in prayer. And, and, and that is the kingdom of God suffering violent and the violence the violent taking it by force. Don't you sit down and let the enemy have his way in you. Go and put the word in you. Put the word in there. Don't go wordless. It is not going to be passive. They are not lazy wishes or cold endeavors that will bring men to heaven. Heaven is a great place and the enemy isn't going to let people go in without a fight. But he is defeated. It is a fixed race. It is a fixed fight. You have won the fight. You just have to walk in your winnings. 
Walk in what you want, and we must speak the word to reveal his defeat, no matter what the world says. See, if we don't speak the word to reveal his defeat, the world's going to think the enemy's winning. Popular isn't winning. We've seen a bunch of popular people take their life, rich people take their life, put drugs on themselves. Just again, that is not the win. The win is our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy look, said thy only begotten Son to die for us. That's my win. Greater is he that's within me than he's in the world. I'm more than a conqueror. Greater than even winning on this earth. There's a greater win happening within us. And so that's our victory. That's, that's, our, that's our blessing to be blessed by God Almighty. So we have defeated the enemy. We have to walk in our winnings. It is clear to the world that the name of Jesus is a threat. And if you think it's a joke, pray the name of Jesus out loud. Say Jesus out loud. People get scared. They don't mind. Again, they'll, they'll let you say God because they got so many different gods, but they don't have Jesus. They don't have a Messiah who died and rose from the grave. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. There's power because that is the word of God. It is that part of God that we have to understand. So, to, to them, that even greater threat that we are seeing is how believers are being treated for standing with what God says in his word. word. So if you stand in the word of God, if you say you mean me and my wife were married and, and, and I submit to the Lord and she submits to me, they think we're crazy. They think, Man, that, that's the most craziest thing in the world. We are submitted to the word of God and I'm submitted to God and she's submitted to me. And then we're submitted to one another. And so one of the building blocks of what, what God is saying, there has to be order. When there's disorder, we are disorganized in not only just our living, but in our faith. And when your faith is disorganized, you will start to believe what is not God more than what is God. You'll believe fear more than you will believe in faith. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17 through 18 says this, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the end of the world. So listen, many times, and so faith comes by hearing and then hearing by the word of God. Now, it's not just the fact that we heard something, it's what did we hear it by? Basically, what are we confirming it with? Hearing by the word of God. Now, now again, many times people wonder if they are hearing from God. And, and this verse reveals how we can do, how we know this, right? When what you hear is lined up with what God has said in his word. You cannot get rid of the Bible. If you get rid of the Bible, you are, you are uh, taking out part of the Trinity. Because Jesus is the word. So if you got the, the father, you said, I heard this from God, but it's not lined up in scripture. So you're going to take Jesus out, but I'm going to walk by the spirit. Come on now. That don't make sense. You can't make that make sense. That, that's part of what God says. Christians that say God spoke to them and is not in line with what he said in the word, that is not from God. Listen, it is not from God. If you can't go and do what Jesus did to the devil and say it is written, it, it was never said by God. It was said by you. You can want it bad enough to where when you pray, you hear you more than you hear God, obviously. If you can't say it is written, it wasn't told to you from God. So God wants to speak into us and what is lined up. This is where the word of God come in. This means faith can't accompany something that is heard, but not said in God's word. Faith can't follow that. Faith can't, faith can't bless what we pretend to be. Faith can't bless what we pretend to hear. And it's pretending when it's not confirming in the word of God. And so we have to go back to this. It is impossible to be bold about something that isn't written. And Hebrews eleven six says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So it's impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to be bold about something that isn't written. So if it's not written, I can't be bold about it. If I can't be bold about it, I can't have faith about it. If I can't have faith about it, I can't be pleasing God with it. I can't say I got something from, from God that I can't even please him with. And so we have to go back to that that God has given us his word for a reason and not just for certain seasons we get to abandon that. So it has to be in there. There's got to be violence about believing the word of God. Surely if we take it out, yeah, we want to relax. So, hey, I guarantee you there's some times and some hurts where people have hurt us and, and you, you want to take out forgiveness. But God didn't let you do that. 
No, no one says that. It's, it's only in things that people kind of want to do and kind of want to get away with and just say, hey, look, listen, we ain't going to be able to win this fight when we practice doing things that are not written by God. And when you practice wrong, you fight to lose. You will lose that fight. Listen to this, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 35. It says this, heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away. So the word of God is eternal. I think I've said this probably the last uh, couple times that I've, I've ministered here online, that the word will not pass away. Good times, popularity, all that stuff, that's going to pass away. What are you sticking with? What are you staying with? Stay with the word of God. Stay with the word of God. Now, again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, hearing by won't what pass away. So not only was faith for today, right? In Matthew 6, 11, it says this, give us this day our daily bread. There's a, there's a way God wants you to eat every day. He don't want you giving up the word today so you can live for your tomorrow. No, eat today. I've made you bread for today. He gave you today this daily bread. And it's, it's something that never passes away, which means when God wrote it, and set it up, it was never out of style. It was never out of culture. It was never old fashioned because God is not in time. He translates time. And, 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 and so listen, when, when the word is being spoken, it is right there on time all the time. It is revealing. And look at all of those things and all those opportunities that, that anybody all through the history of time, when they saw all of these prophecies about the Messiah coming, Messiah coming, over 107 of them, and Jesus fulfilled them all, why didn't they stop it? They couldn't. Just like they can't stop him from coming back. You got all these atheists, got all these people trying to burn the Bible, but they can't burn the word. They cannot stop the word of God. It's coming. It's going to fulfill. Jesus is coming back and he's going to take us in, take us with him. And then he's going to establish the new kingdom, a new heaven and a new earth. It's going to happen. We need to stand with God and, not, and quit staring at the world. And, and, and here's our belief. Here's, here's where he says, now, if the word of Jesus will never pass away, we can we can be sure that he isn't going to change them just to go along with someone's opinion. If they won't pass away, he ain't going to change them just so someone can get away. If his word changed for specific circumstances, it would be incapable of withstanding the test of time. If he just changed it just on a certain time, well, I said this even though I didn't say it in my word, I'm just saying it to them so that they can have what they want. How is it going to stand a test of time when it can't get through the test of the moment? How is it going to make it to the end of the book if it can't get through certain chapters? No, that's not God. God has gotten us through this. Now, listen, listen, let's keep rolling now. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 through 15 says this. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee. Multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise he made agreement and made a promise to himself. Now, God is that real, that big. There's nothing else I can, can swear by, so I swear by my own name. God is not going to lie, and God is not going to discredit himself so that we can say we heard something that was not God. He left us his word so we can line our lives up with what he speaks to us. Abraham, who had believed God through the challenge of old age. I mean, old age, you're going to have a baby at 100. Come on now, you make it through that challenge. Now, you've made it through some things. I've made it through some things. Why am I going to question God now when God had brought me through before? You've seen too much to go back and not believe now. You've been through too much. You're still here, the very fact that you're still here. You've been through too much to go back and say, I don't know if I believe. Now, no, you believe. You stand with God. You believe in God. That is the, that is the power of God. And so he used your strength to believe, to willfully take his son up to offer The very son, 100 years old, God gives it to him. But can I still have it? God says, here's your son. I know it took you a long time to have it. I know it took 100 years. But will you offer your son to me? Listen, nothing we have belongs to us. Give it back to God. He knows what's best to do for it. He's already provided what God is asking you to do. And the steps he's asking you to take, the boldness he's asking you, he has provided something, but he wants you to walk in faith so you can see his provision over what you trying to do and call your decision. The provision of God will not override you deciding not to listen to God through his word. 
So we have to get back there. We need you. And I, and I I know I'm coming at you. I know because we need to start learning how to fight. We got too many sick friends. We got too many people out there. This world is too sick. They're, they're abusing children. And we know it's been happening, man. But it's face to face. When I see these things on campuses, uh, every time I go out and speak, man, I get angry and angry. Let's stand the violent. Take it by force. Pray like you're mad about something. Let's stand up there and let's get in agreement with, with, with what God is doing. So God's response was to swear by his word, which is what he has given us to. And, and no matter what is going on in this world, it can't compete with the word of God. This oath showed that God's promises, like his character, are unchanging. Abraham's trust in this was the gateway to the fulfillment of the promise. So when we say God spoke to us, it should be revealed in his word. And if it isn't, we are putting God's character on trial. So God said, I swear by this. This is, this is me. I swear by it. I swear by who I am. And we can't say God said something that he didn't say. That's not a lie. It's not confirmed in his word. Then we say God's character is on trial because God is not who he says he is. Come on now, That's you're not being super spiritual because you say you heard something because you believe something, everything outside the Bible. Again, you're taking out the Trinity. You're taking out the piece, a major piece in the Trinity. John chapter 10, verse four through five says this. And when he put it um, forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. Well, how do you know it's the voice of God or the voice of strangers if you're not confirming it by the word of God? You will believe strange stuff if you don't go to the word to confirm that what God said or what strangers said. You will follow strangers. Knowing the voice of God reveals knowing God. And we can follow what he says with boldness because we know who he is. When I try to re-identify God, when I try to re-identify faith, when I try to re-identify forgiveness, when I try to re-identify uh, belief, I put myself in position to miss out on knowing God. John chapter 1 and verse 14, it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh. How can the word be made flesh if we take parts out of it that we say God told us, but he didn't write it? How can it be made flesh? How can it manifest right here? How can you say you heard that from God when it ain't written from God? It can't be made flesh if God is, if it's not down, if it's not written from God, which means you can't follow it in the flesh if it's not written from God. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and words with God. Another verse I've probably said for the last couple of times. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Further along, verse 14, and the word became flesh. In the beginning was the word, words with God, God, the flesh, God that came in the flesh was Jesus. Jesus is the word and the word will not be able to stand up to be able to, to stand up the ground, 10 center grounds it stands on, except on the grounds it stands on, if the ground it stands on keeps changing. The word can't stand on shaky ground, right? You, you're in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in Matthew where it says you build your house on a rock or you build your house on sand. The storm's going to hit both houses. But what you built on, right? What you built on, if God told you to do that and, and, and he said, okay, yeah, here it is in the scripture, this lines up with scripture, that's rock building. But if you can't find the scripture, you just said, this is what I, the Holy Spirit told me. You can't tell me what the Holy Spirit, you on sand. Storms are going to hit that. Storms are going to wash that away. Storms are coming for that. Now, the fact that it can't, it became flesh gives us all the boldness to be violent in our belief because we know our defender is eternal and will stand with us in our present situation. You got to take it like the little girl on the airplane who was told, sit down, sit down, she's run around, and then they finally forced her to sit down. Her mother didn't put the seatbelt on her. And the little girl said, I may be sitting down on the outside, but I'm still running around on the inside. You need to run in such a way to obtain the prize and run in such a way that you're going to see the victory of God in your life and in your family. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the voice. 
We also thank you for the violence to believe the voice. We thank you for our response. That, Lord God, we're going to stay and sit to the side and, and lay hold. I, I pray for saints right now, Lord God, that may be around people and maybe around other voices that are speaking out and maybe rude, maybe loud, maybe whatever, but the voice of God, Lord God, that they'll know your voice and their response, the violence of that voice begins to rise up and rise out of them that they're believing and they'll be able to hear it in, in such a powerful way. No matter what is being said around them, it can't be said within them. Lord, we thank you for blessing them. We thank you for change that is happening in the hearts of many, and we thank you for healing in those households we've spoken over. Father, we thank you for just blessing this week and continue through. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go be violent. Go be violent. God didn't send you here to just make it to heaven. He sent us out here to be dangerous. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.